Hey guys, what's up? I'm Just and I'm here with Richard. And guys, we are here to talk about our trade candidates for this season. Uh, Richard, what's going on, man? Not too much. Uh, you know, it's pretty good time to start talking about trade candidates. Yeah, we got somewhat of a long list, so this video could be one of maybe two videos. Or if we're lucky, we can speed up the trade candidate talks and then we'll probably force it into one. So let's get started with San Francisco outfielder Aaron Rowan. Richard, this guy has been on a lot of targets for some teams. Where will this guy go if he gets traded? What are your teams that, that might acquire this guy? Uh, well, I have two teams in mind that I could. I mean, it is Aaron Rowan, so, and he did sign a five-year, $60 million deal uh, back when the Giants first signed him. So, you know, he's $12 million for this season and next. Um, I, I mean, I have a list of teams right here that probably that could use him, but probably won't. Uh, I got the A's, the Braves, the Brewers, the Diamondbacks, Mariners, Nationals, and Pirates. Out of all those teams, though, I could see the A's. Um, you know, right now they're our outfielders. All right, Josh Willingham, the Jesus, and Crisp. Um, maybe if they can work on a deal, this deal Josh Willingham or something uh, i'm not sure but i think my favorite to acquire rowan which like i said it might not happen is the braves um they also have a really untradeable outfielder named mccloud who they could you know do a, a swap for maybe um name mccloud and you know a pretty a decent prospect for rowan to try to uh, cut down the cost a little bit um you know rowan is a tough is a tough one um but out of any team, if I had to give him the benefit of the doubt, I say the Braves are the best match. But like I said, I'm unsure. Um, yeah, I have to agree with you, but I have to I have to throw out another team. I have to throw out the San Diego Padres. I mean, this team is having some uh, outfielder problems. I have to say a little bit. I think they have uh, Cameron Maven, Chris Denorfia. I don't know who is like the outfielder. I mean. I think that Aaron Rowan could fit well with the Padres this year because even though it's in the same uh, state in California, I just think that San Diego is going to have a really great chance of acquiring him in the same division. So I think they're going to give up maybe a couple prospects for Rowan. So I'd say the Padres should actually be thrown into that talk. But the Braves is another great candidate. So far, Rowan has a home run and three RBIs so far this season. This guy has hit his fourth double today against Arizona. I'm watching the game currently right now. Giants side of the game 4-4, four to four. so I think that oh, Rowan will have a good fit in either in Atlanta or San Diego. Next, we have B.J. Upton of the Tampa Bay Rays, Richard's favorite team, the Rays. Um, Richard, tell us about B.J. and why do you think he's going to be a trade candidate? Well, uh, you know, the Rays are a potential team to have a fire sale coming up, you know, if they're out of the race. You know, they, they could be trading B.J. Upton and a lot of other guys who we might, we're going to get to later on this list. But right now, I'll cover B.J. Upton. Um, right now, B.J. Upton is scheduled to make $4.75 million this year. Um, you know, he hasn't really done that great for the Rays. Uh, he came up through the system as a shortstop, transitioned to center field, and I remember watching him transition to center field, and that was uh, ugly. But... Um, he, oh no, he's scheduled to make $4.825 million, not $4.75, my bad. But this is a guy, you know, who had a lot of high hopes when he first came through the system. Um, he's only hit 300 once, and that was in 2007. Since then, he's hit uh, 273, 241, 237, and now he, on this year he's batting 245. Um, yeah, he just, he's been really struggling a lot. He's a nice center field, you know, has problems with hustling, but he is a definite trade candidate if the Rays are out of the AL East or wild card race. Yeah, what team would you think that will actually pick up his talent? Well, I mean, uh, a team that would pick him up would be a team that's definitely in the hunt for the pennant uh, race. Uh, you know, you can think of teams like uh, the Chicago White Sox, um, the Cincinnati Reds, um, Maybe not the Reds, because they do have Golems and uh, Stubbs and Bruce, but uh, I, think, I think the White Sox are interesting um, because they do have uh, Juan Pierre um, and players like that, but looking at the White Sox, 
depth chart. Their outfield isn't very uh, isn't very great. Uh, you know, they have Alex Rios, who you know is really good. He, can, he plays a nice center field. They do have Carlos Quinn too. So I mean, their outfield is actually a lot better than I thought. Um, right now, it's, it's hard to pick a single team. Maybe the uh, the Angels. Because they do have Peter Borges, who really hasn't developed into a major league hitter. Or maybe if they're in the, the, the thick of a race for AL West title, they could just pick up Upton and include him in the outfield with Torrey Hunter and Vernon Wells and probably slide Borges somewhere else, maybe back down to AAA or something. Um, I, I give the Angels a really good shot at acquiring B.J. Upton. Yeah. Um, I have to say, since the Angels are my team, I think that B.J. Upton will be a good fit with them. So I've actually had to say that. But I also want to look at the Florida Marlins in this one. I mean, their outfield is stacked. Uh, but I don't really... I can see B.J. taking over Scott Co- uh, uh, Coughlin's position. Chris Coughlin in center field. And Polly Bloom has a backup and they play him in the infield. Even either at, maybe at third, maybe at short. Uh, Mike Stanton, right, Logan Morrison in left field. I can possibly put uh, BJ in center. So I actually have to say the Marlins could be a candidate, but I actually really want to see uh, Upton out there in L.A. with my Angels. Uh, maybe the Yankees. I mean, I don't think, I'm pretty sure it won't happen because you got Brett Gardner, um, you got Curtis Granderson, you got Nick Swisher. But I really want to see either BJ in a Yankee uniform or Angels uniform. But also, I like I could actually see BJ in a, Mar- in a Marlins uniform. So. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna be uh, how well will the uh, Rays do so far this season? They're really bouncing back from a terrible start, so we have to keep their options open. Next we have. S- oh. oh, sorry. I could also see the the Phillies too. They're a definite possibility. Their right field position is kind of uh, you know, shallow with Ben Francisco. They also have Raul Labanos who is getting old. Maybe the Phillies, uh, but right now, like uh, I can see the Angels um, acquiring him. But the Phillies present uh, interesting case as well. Yeah. Next, we have San Francisco Giants starting pitcher uh, Barry Zito. This guy was just placed on the DL just today, this uh, this morning actually. Um, I really like this guy. I really still pay attention to him when he played for Oakland. When this guy was just really in there at Cy Young talks. Um, this guy is having a slump right now when he played for San Francisco. Richard, what team will pick this guy up? Uh, well, he is a trade candidate, but I really don't see a team that would be willing to pay this kind of money for a guy. He's, he's scheduled to make $18.5 million this year, 19 next uh, the year in 2012, 2013, $20 million, and then in 2014 there's an $18 million team option. I think the Giants are stuck with this guy. Uh, I, I mean, he's a trade candidate, definitely. But a team, the Giants would have to absorb a lot of his salary in order for a team to pick him up. I, you know, he's coming over here from Oakland, where he was awesome in Oakland. And since joining the, the Giants, his lowest ERA has been a 4.03, and that's you know average. So, you know, I really don't see a team picking this guy up unless something drastic happens where the Giants absorb quite a bit of that salary. Yeah. Um, I could possibly see him going to maybe a team that's not... If, if, if he comes back and he starts being a decent pitcher, I'm not expecting a lot out of Barry Zito, but I could possibly see either the Mariners going after this guy because they are having some questions in their rotation. Eric Bedard, the... Uh, Felix Fernandez, the ace of the squad. I really don't know who the hell is in the pitching in the Mariners' pitching rotation. So I know they got some they have a decent Luke French. I don't know who that guy is. Um, I can see Barry, maybe Barry Zito and Felix Fernandez being the ace of the top two in the Mariners organization if the Mariners decide to even ask this guy to come on their team. So I think at the end of his contract, I think a, a team lower than that. Like look at Jeff Francis. Guys coming over from Colorado, and then he's going to the Royals, who are really in need of help. And I think that's what's going to happen with Zito. So we all have to see. Um, guys, we're at the 10 minute mark in this video, so we're going to make a part two to this. Thank you so much for tuning in for part one. Check out part two next. We have a couple of guys who you'll be like, wow, this guy's a trade candidate. So stay tuned and check out part two. We'll talk to you guys.